I'm gonna put this on this and see what footage I can get. Insta360 just released a new action camera, the Insta360 GO 3, and it's got some awesome features going for it, like the action pod, which has a rear touchscreen. And the touchscreen does flip up so that you can see yourself whilst you're recording, making sure you're properly in the frame. The action pod also acts as a charger, so if you've got the camera in the case, then it's gonna charge the camera for you, and you'll get up to about 170 minutes of battery life. But sadly, that does mean that there is no removable battery, so you've just got the action pod and then the charge that you have on the camera itself. So if you're using the camera outside of the action pod then you're going to get about 45 minutes of battery life but in reality if you're shooting in 2.7k then that's more like 35 minutes the action pod also acts as a remote and a live preview so if you've got the camera mounted somewhere then you can operate it from the action pod and you can see what you're doing at the same time whilst you're filming so in terms of stabilization, the Insta360 GO 3 has Insta360's flow state stabilization and it also has horizon lock, so you're gonna get footage which is gonna be level no matter what. For horizon lock though, you have to shoot in the free frame video mode, which also allows you to reframe the video in the Insta360 Studio desktop app and also the mobile app. One thing to note though is when you're filming in the free frame video mode, you can only shoot up to 1440p, but you can shoot up to 50 frames per second. And you can also change the aspect ratio in the studio app or the mobile app as well. But this is something that you can't do in the normal video mode. You'd have to do it before you started shooting. But if you shoot in the normal video mode, you'll be able to shoot in 2.7K up to 30 FPS, but you won't get horizon lock, but you'll still get the image stabilization. Flow state stabilization has three levels. So depending on the intensity of what you're doing, then you just choose the level based on that. But the higher the level, then the more delayed the screen is gonna be on the action pod. So that's just something to note. I think one of the biggest advantages of the Go 3 is the fact that it's so lightweight and you can just mount it pretty much anywhere. And for POV, having something that small is such a bonus because it means that it's not gonna feel really heavy around your neck or just drag your clothes down. And the magnetic mount is completely solid. I didn't feel like it was gonna fall off the pendant when I was running. Something that I think a lot of people are gonna really appreciate is the fact that there aren't any filming limitations anymore. So you can literally film for as long as you want, which is great if you are shooting POV or you're just shooting something where you just wanna shoot continuously. And that's mainly down to the improved heat dissipation of the Go 3. If you are looking to record yourself talking, then the audio does sound really decent from the camera considering it is an action camera. Just a quick audio test because it's a little bit breezy and it's not super windy, but I just wanted to hear what the audio sounds like and let you guys hear what the audio sounds like as well. So like I said, a bit breezy, but it's not super, super windy. It's got two mics near the lens and one speaker at the bottom. However, the action pod doesn't support the use of an external mic. But that aside, you can get some really good mounts for it because it's got a quick release system. You can get some quick release mounts, which I am such a fan of because it just saves so much time and it's just less hassle. You can also get a mini two-in-one tripod that also acts as a selfie stick and you don't have to attach it with the traditional screw, it just has this quick release clip which is completely awesome because again, less hassle and less fiddling around. And you can also get this monkey tail mount as well if you want to mount the camera in some really awkward places. And as well as it being a flexible mount, you can also use it as a selfie stick as well as a tripod. Okay, so I've got the go through on this little cheapo RC truck that I picked up over the weekend, so we'll see how that does. And I've put the action pod on the actual remote because there wasn't any other way that I could do it, but I just want to be able to see the footage as I'm doing it. So it's done in a very crude way, but I couldn't find any other mounts. This is the only mount that I could find, even though I've got a bazillion of them, but never mind. So hopefully I'll be able to see what I'm doing. I'm going to put the camera into free frame mode so that I've got the horizon lock and then if the truck spins or anything then it should maintain the horizon so let's see what happens I just crashed it and it'll be interesting to see what the footage looks like because obviously it completely flipped but I did scratch the camera a bit the lens is a bit scratched but on the outer bit so not the lens itself and it's got a little bit of damage on it but never mind <laughs> Thank you.
In terms of it being waterproof, if you're looking to take the Go 3 underwater with you, then you can go down to five meters or 16 feet. But unfortunately, the Action Pod isn't waterproof. It has an IPX4 water resistant rating, so you'll just about get away with using it in the rain and getting a few splashes on it. But this is only true if the camera is in the Action Pod. So if the camera's wet at all, then it's just a really good idea to wipe it off before it goes back in the case. In terms of storage, it is inbuilt storage. There's no way to expand that. So you kind of have to buy the unit based on how much you think you're gonna need, which is a little bit of a bummer because it would have been nice if there was a micro SD card slot on the case, for example. Obviously you can't have it on the camera, but on the case, I would have thought it could be possible, but perhaps there's limitations that I'm not aware of. But yeah, that's just one thing that you have to be mindful of is that you just need to buy it based on how much you would think you're gonna need. So there are several different color profiles to choose from. The neutral ones are vivid, standard, and flat. And then you've also got a bunch of creative ones that you can try out too. And you can also select how much sharpness you want, ranging from low to highest. Though you're gonna be better off sticking to low or medium if you don't want your footage to look completely overdone. And like with most action cameras, there's a variety of fields of view. And in the free frame video mode, you can change this in the Insta360 Studio app or mobile app. So that's the new Insta360 Go 3. I absolutely love the Action Pod. I think it's such a great feature and such a massive update from the Go 2 as well. There's a link in the description if you want to find out a little bit more about it. And if you do want to buy it and use the link in the description, it's going to help out my channel at no extra cost to you. So massive thank you if you do use that link. So what do you think about it so far? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one. It's always really tricky trying to film something and not let someone see a camera that's not released yet because you're not supposed to be showing it to anybody or telling anyone about it.